All right, when dealing with projectile motion, anytime a projectile is fired across a level surface, it's the motion in the y-axis that eventually causes the projectile to land. And when firing a projectile toward a vertical surface like a wall, it's the motion in the x-axis that eventually stops that projectile. But today I'm going to show you what to do when a projectile is fired across a sloped surface. So what we have here today is a skier traveling horizontally at some speed we're going to call s. And the skier is going to go off a jump and land on a slope that's angled at some angle theta relative to the horizontal axis. Now I'm going to do this problem all in variables so that we can come up with an equation you'll be able to apply to whatever problem it is like this that you're trying to solve. You see, what we're trying to solve for is the displacement of the skier down this hill. But the issue is that this displacement is not entirely limited by the motion in the x-axis or the y-axis. The motion is really limited by the relationship or even the ratio of those two values, depending on how steep the hill is. So to solve this problem, what we're going to do is look at both the motion of the skier in the x and y axis simultaneously, and we're going to relate them back to the angle of the hill. You see, in solving for the displacement of the skier, the displacement of the skier horizontally, or in the x axis, is going to be given by the displacement is equal to st. That is to say, the skier is going to be moving horizontally at some speed s the entire time it's in the air t being time. Now in the y-axis we have a slightly more complicated situation because vertically the skier is going horizontally off this jump which means their initial velocity is zero. But because they're in projectile motion or effectively free fall in the y-axis, they're accelerating vertically. So looking in the y-axis we can use the kinematic equations to find the displacement in the y-axis is one half gt squared. Now realize these two equations for the position of the skier in both the x and y axis have to be related back to the angle of the hill. You see, when the skier lands down here, the displacement of the skier in the y axis and the x axis are geometrically related to the angle of the hill. We really have a vertical and a horizontal displacement. And if you look at this as a right triangle, really what we have is an opposite and an adjacent side. So mathematically, we can say the tangent of this angle of the hill is equal to our displacement in the y over the displacement in the x-axis. Now subbing our equations for the displacement in the x and y-axis into this function, we get an expression for the tangent of theta is equal to 1 half gt squared over st. And you'll see these t's cancel out. And rearranging this, we can get the time the skier is going to spend in the air. That is 2s tan theta over g. Now, we're not trying to solve for how long the skier spends in the air, but we can use this time and plug it back into either of these equations to solve for the displacement either in the x or y axis. So, using the x axis, because that one's the easiest, multiplying our time equation by s is going to give us the displacement in the x axis, or 2s squared tan theta over g. Now, that function is a function for this horizontal displacement of the skier. So if we know the horizontal displacement and this angle, we can solve for the hypotenuse here, or really the distance down the hill which the skier is going to land. So if we set d equals the displacement in the x divided by cosine theta, we can solve for the total displacement of this projectile down the hill. And realize, what we have now is an equation that's going to allow us to solve for just how far any projectile is going to go down a hill, provided we know its initial speed, as well as the angle of the hill, and of course, the acceleration due to gravity. So, I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.